Hey guys, welcome to a brand new video. Haven't done these in a while, but I know the hair is getting a bit out of control, don't worry. Also, we are once again shooting at like F8 because I forgot an ND filter. There has been a lot of things in my life right now. Getting accepted to a school, preparing to move to another city in a few months and stuff like that. I want to catch you guys up on my photography pickups from the last four months I guess. Also I really want to thank every single one of you for subscribing. In the last video I should have uh, thanked everyone for 500 subscribers and now we just hit 600 subscribers today which is <laughs> amazing. Thank you guys for that. This is the first camera I got. So this is a Pentax ME and some of you that watched my videos from Camera Rescue over the summer might have caught that I was actually shooting with a Pentax ME already. That was my friend's camera that I was borrowing but I loved the camera so much that I actually bought myself one. Because this is truly just a great SLR camera. It's really small, it's one of the smallest SLR cameras ever produced. It has an amazing finder, really good magnification and it's aperture priority so you can shoot pretty quickly with it. This one is in really good shape. I bought it from camera store, completely checked and fixed so everything works really great and I have on it the 50mm 1.7 lens. Basically this is all that I want in a SLR camera, in a really nice form factor and as a plus it looks really good. Also I have started to experiment with black and white film and some filters. I shot one roll of FOMA, I think it was 400 that I shot with this and an orange filter and the results came out super well. And this is the second camera. Some of you might recognize that this is an Instax camera. This is the Fuji Instax SQ6. I bought this uh, because I had been shooting Polaroid before this. I had an old Polaroid 600 camera and it was working well, but I decided to get rid of that camera and replace it with this Instax camera for a few reasons. And yes, I know uh, the Instax square film is a bit smaller than the Polaroid film, but it's a downside that you'll have to take. First of all, the quality of the film. No matter how good the Impossible Project or now just Polaroid have gotten at making their film, the quality control and the color reproduction and things like that just can't rival Instax film, honestly. For one, Instax is much more economical. I can buy 20 pictures for 20 euros, while at Polaroid I pay 20 euros for 8 shots. Also, color accuracy is a huge thing, because with the Instax film the color reproduction is really good. Fuji has really nailed down the color science with these. Whereas with Polaroid, it really depends on the film you get and also the temperature at which the film develops. For example, I shot some Polaroid during the summer and the shots turned out super red because it was like almost 30 degrees Celsius outside. But I would say that with these Instax cameras, the problem is not that the film is bad, it's that every camera that Fuji has made that you can put the film in kind of sucks. And it's that these cameras are really basic made for the normal consumer and not so much a photographer. Yes, I know there are some professional cameras that use Instax film from the likes of Mint camera, but those are super expensive and I can't afford those. The SQ6 is kind of a higher end model because it has features that the other cameras don't have anymore, like manual flash override. You can scale focus with this camera and you also have a little exposure compensation that you can use. And I would say this camera is the perfect companion to parties for example because it has a flash and everyone in the group knows how to use it. It's a simple point and shoot. Here let me take a photo. And there we go. It spits out the film and then we wait. Also one thing that the Fuji is better than the Polaroid. With Polaroid film you have to wait like 30 minutes for the whole picture to be completely developed. This I would say is perfectly ready in like five minutes. Next, moving on to the last camera and the one that I am most excited about. And the camera that I am most excited about is this. You probably already know what this is. The original Mew, not the Mew 2. I bought one even though I had <laughs> talked trash about them before and how they're really overpriced. 
I got this and I have completely fallen in love with it. This is not the Mew 2, the one that's really hyped and really overpriced. This is the original Mew and I got it for 90 euros, which I think is a pretty good deal. The only differences from the Mew 1 to the Mew 2 are that the Mew 2 is water resistant when it's closed, so you can probably go to a beach with it or something. And it has a 35 millimeter 2.8 lens, while this has a 35 mil 3.5 lens. But the aperture really doesn't matter because supposedly it's really hard to get your Mew 2 to actually shoot at 2.8 aperture. For me, a everyday carry camera has to tick a few boxes and this ticks all of them. First of all, it has to be easy to carry and this really is this is the perfect camera for that because it's a point and shoot that I can actually fit in my pocket. Then it has to have a nice lens. This has a 35mm lens which is perfect because I've gotten so used to 50mm and that's sometimes a bit too tight. Third, it has to have a flash and this has a flash. It has red eye compensation and it also has fill flash and you can disable the flash which is great. But the flash is really good and it's really important for me. And then it has autofocus. Uh, the autofocus is pretty okay. I have had a few instances where it just went totally in the wrong direction and missed completely. But for most part, the autofocus is really good and hits where you want. The only thing I don't like about this camera is that it has only DX code reading and you can't manually set the ISO yourself. So if you're shooting film with no DX coding, for example, it's gonna shoot it at 100 ISO, which is a shame because I have always wanted to shoot some Santa Raya 1000 film, but I can't with this camera because that film is not DX coded. So recently I've had this Mew with me to some parties and it's been great. It's nothing more than a point and shoot though. I wouldn't shoot anything serious with this. I wouldn't shoot slide film with this camera and that gave me an idea that I should probably try to shoot slide film with this and see how it turns out. Oh no. I want to thank you for watching this video and if you have something to say about these cameras, have you tried a Mu1 or have you shot Instax? Do you think Polaroid is still better than Instax and all of that kind of stuff? Comment it down below if you like these videos. Also subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. See ya. This place is so beautiful, god damn.